So my buddy K Cow Gaming here, link to his channel in the description down below, wanted me to review his Darlington throwback for this year. And this is a throwback to his first full season of NASCAR 2005 Chase for the Cup. He ran this exact scheme for the entire season and he's bringing it back for just one race. Honestly, I actually like the design. It's sleek, it looks amazing, the, the blue and yellow with the black and white. Absolutely amazing. This game is back. And if that's not an indication of how this is gonna go, well then I'm sorry that you're not from the 90s. It's only our hands together we stand. Take one step, I will say. What's up, Mooch Crow Talent Mooch here, and welcome back to my yearly review of the Darlington throwback schemes. This year we have 39 cars headed to Darlington, and all 39 of them are sporting unique paint schemes. Some of them, a lot of them actually are throwbacks. There are a few that aren't, but that's okay. And with the Darlington theme being the 90s, we are going to run with that theme as well. And we're going to rate these schemes back or whack. Whether these schemes are good or bad or somewhere in the middle, it doesn't matter. We're going to review all 39 schemes that are headed to Darlington. So let's get this show started. Alright, so our first scheme that we have is Landon Castle's Starcom Fiber Chevrolet Camaro. Very nice. This scheme is a throwback to Sterling Marlin's 2002 Dodge Intrepid that was sponsored by Coors Light. Okay, so, you know, normally I would be bummed. It doesn't, it really bums me that when companies don't come back for, like, one race, specifically for this race, because it would just be amazing. But, you know, Starcom Fiber decided to take their name and put it in the Coors Light font. That is awesome! Oh my gosh, look at the mountains here. Oh, this car is just accurate to it all. Mm -mm. Oh, it's such a beautiful thing to look at. Eye candy. Also, they actually are... They're also raising awareness for Parkinson's disease. Is that how you pronounce it? I think that's how you pronounce it. But anyway, with the uh, Team Fox Foundation here on the... On the, um... On the, uh... C-post of the car... And um, you're not going to see it, but on the back bumper, I think they also have the Team Fox Foundation there as well. Either way, this game is absolutely back. I love it, and I would love to see it again when we go for the 2000s to two, 2000 to 2004 theme. Please, Starcom Fiber, do us a solid and bring this back in a few years, maybe two, if we're if we're good. <laughs> Alright, moving on to our next scheme, we have Kurt Busch with the Chevrolet Accessories Chevrolet Camaro, which is a throwback to the first generation of Chevrolet Camaros. Now, normally I would go off on simple schemes like, oh, they're bland, they're not fun to look at, but this one is actually simple, but yet bold, and I love it. I mean, it's rare you see orange race cars anymore. Like, good lord, where'd those days go? I'm not a fan. I'm not an I'm not an absolute fan of the Monster Energy logo being in black, but I understand why it's there. Have you tried putting putting green on a green logo on orange? It just kind of clashes against each other, and it's just not fun to look at. But yes, Kurt Busch absolutely has a stunning scheme. In fact, that is the, in fact, right next to it, that's, that's the car they're throwing it back to. That is actually a Camaro Z28 from 1969. Gorgeous scheme, bold, yet simple. I love it. This scheme is back, baby, back. Ever wonder what a Mustang would look like if, it, if they raced back in 1996? Well, you're looking at the answer here. Brad Keselowski racing his the number two Miller 
Ford Mustang, which is a throwback to Rusty Wallace's 1996 Miller Ford Thunderbird, which you can see in the background right here. This car is absolutely gorgeous. It looks like it definitely came straight out of 96. I mean, look at it. How do you not say this came, this did not come from 1996? It looks amazing. The number, the the colors match up, it, the, the sides match up. They, they match everything down to the detail on this car. And I freaking love it. Like, oh my gosh, I don't even think you could even try and top this, uh, this, I don't think Team Penske's ever gonna top this game. And yes, they've actually had some good ones. They've had Midnight in 2016, I believe. Was it 16 or was it 17? I think it was 2017. But but anyway, they had Midnight in 2017. That scheme, I, will, I absolutely love that scheme. I did like Keselowski's scheme from last year. Um... I would definitely adore his 2016 throwback. That was really cool. So anyway, but anyway, Keselowski always brings good throwback schemes, including the first throwback scheme that he he ran, which was the Miller High Draft High Draft car, which he ran in 2015 when they brought when they brought Darlington back to Labor Day weekend. So that was awesome. Anyway, this scheme is a 100% back and gets the Mooch seal of approval for a return next year. Just don't bring it back like three times in a row. That that would be annoying. Our next throwback we have here is Austin Dillon's number three American Ethanol Chevrolet Camaro. This is a throwback to Richard Childress's 1970s Oldmobile Cutlass. Now, being accurate to the six to the seventy scheme, or the the seventies car that that he, that Dylan's throwing it back to, is not gonna save this one for me. Do you want to know why this is not gonna be saved for me? Because of how accurate it is down to the details. That is because of the last two throwback schemes he had. Last year, Austin Dillon brought this amazing metallic silver race car that was throwing it back to Dale Sr.'s 1995 Winston car. And it flew under everyone's radar because RCR kept it in secret the entire time, all the way up to the first practice session in Darlington last year. And when we saw it, we were all amazed by it. Like, I absolutely loved that car. In 2017... They actually <laughs> threw it back to Dale Sr.'s Wrangler car from 1987. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's cars. Wait, what? yeah, 2017. I was thinking 2017. Did I say last year? I don't know. Whatever. But anyway, those two schemes combined are the reason this scheme is just such a freaking letdown. It's a fucking letdown. I'm sorry. I want to like this scheme, but I can't. This game just got absolutely topped by the last two years of throwbacks for the number three car. I'm sorry, do not bring this game back. It's whack. The next car that is headed to Darlington is Kevin Harvick's number four Bush Beer Big Buck Hunter Ford Mustang. Now, this game I'm aware is not a throwback, but because it's headed to Darlington, I am ob I am obligated to review it as such. So. We have here an orange car surround an orange car that has wildlife all over the place. You can see the buck here. Uh, you can also see ducks in the background. Uh, you also see wolves and coyotes in the background of there. You can see trees in the background. I'm just not liking this scheme at all. I, I'm not sure what it is. I'm, I mean, it's such a letdown. Harvick's not running a throwback this year. But I... I'm just not a. I'm not a fan of animals on a on a race car. I'm not a fan of animal prints on a race car. And I'm certainly not a fan of attempting to put grass on a race car. Uh, let's see here. There, there was the Claritin's car. I do not like that one. Um, uh, there's there's probably a few other race cars that had grass on them. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is awful. Any type of plants on a race car. Brant, looking at your current 2019 scheme. 
it, it's not fun to look at. I'm sorry, but as much as I want to like this game, I, I can't bring myself to like it. This this game is whack. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I gotta move on. This is just an eyesore for me. Alright, moving on to our next throwback. This is Ryan Newman's number six Oscar Mayer Velveeta throwback car. Okay, I like this car, but at the same time, I also hate this car. Let me tell you what I like about it first. I love the design. It is designed after Mark Martin's 1993 Southern 500 race winning, race winning for Thunderbird. I like how accurate it is. I like how the... How the colors are all line up, one and the same. But let me tell you what I don't like about it: the color scheme. Thank you, Oscar Mayer. You know how to ruin a throwback scheme. What should, what the scheme should have looked like was red, light blue, and then blue, dark blue. But no, because we have to have Oscar Mayer on the race car. It ruins the throwback, and they go yellow, orange, red, in that order. Like, oh my god, it's an eyesore! Why would you ruin such a beautiful scheme like that? You don't do that! You do not do that! Oh my gosh. I want to hate this scheme, and I hate the color design, but I, no, I hate the color scheme. I love the design. That, there's just no way I can describe this car. This, this scheme is absolutely just... Ugh. I'm at an impasse here. You know what? Screw it. I'm just going to say this scheme is whack. It's a hybrid of, of back and whack. Like, I, there, there's something I like about it. There's something I hate about it. And it's just conflicting. So, moving on to the next scheme. Get this eyesore color scheme out of my face. Here we have Daniel Hamrick's Caterpillar car, and I hate it. Okay, <clears throat> let me tell you something. There are, there have been some really bad-ass Caterpillar schemes in the past, and in the past. Let's, let's go here. Let's see here. We have Jeff Burton's car from 2009 to 2013, which Ryan Newman drove from 2014 to, I want to say, 2016. Then you got Ward Burton's throwback. Ward Burton's car from, like, the late 90s to 2004, 2003, I'll say. Um, Daniel Hamrick's 2019, 2000, yeah, 2019 car is absolutely badass. It starts as, like, this, like, copper or bronze, and then it fades to black. Like, you, you, if you look at it, you, you know you, it's a cat car, and you're just like, that's a cool scheme. This, they tried to make a race car look like a tractor, and this is the outcome. You know how I, you know how I feel about I absolutely hate this. Like, what is this even a throwback to? Is, 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 is it the, is, is it a throwback to a, to an old Caterpillar car? To an old Caterpillar bulldozer or tractor that they, that they made in the past? Like, what even? I, I cannot... And look how bland it is! It's just a simple gray! Like, I get it. You wanted to throw it back to something unique. But I'm sorry. You could have done a Warburton throwback. I would have been happy with that. You could have done maybe an obscure throwback to Scott Wimmer. I would have been okay with that. You could have thrown it back to Jeff Burton's 2009 car. I would have been okay with that. But nope! Here you are throwing it back to whatever this is. And I hate it. I'm sorry, this category scheme is whack. Let's move on to the next one. Alright, so our next scheme is Chase Elliott's number 9 Napa Auto Parts car, which is an exact replica of, his, of the car that his father, Bill Elliott, raced for his, for his dad, so basically Chase's grandfather, and actually scored Bill Elliott's first pole in 1981. Yeah, this is exact, the exact same scheme that Bill Elliott won his first pole in, so... But that's again. I mean, I like how accurate it is to the... How accurate it is. I mean, the 9 is absolutely a, a good... It absolutely matches up to the, to the same... To the um, font, I guess. Um, you got Chase Elliott, you got the... You got the Napa logo in blue. That's pretty good. This this girl was actually sponsored by Melgear. From what I've done, 
based on the research I've done. And this scheme, I like it, but I'm really getting, I'm really done with the uh, Elliot family throwbacks. Like, I, I get why he does it, and it's really cool that he likes to throw it back to his family, but it, it needs to stop. There are other throwbacks you could do. You could do Jeff Gordon's 2007, 2007 Pepsi car. You could do, uh, there's, there's some other cars, some other schemes out there that you could throw back to. Like, mm, like you, how about doing an obscure throwback to like an old Napa car? Like, I know you did a Napa car and a Napa, the, the old Napa delivery trucks in the past, in like 2016. I loved that scheme. It was a simple scheme, but it stood out, and I loved it. But here, yeah, I like the scheme, but I'm just getting tired of the family throwbacks. Like, this has been an ongoing thing since 2017. And, well, don't get me wrong, I did like last year's throwback scheme. It's just that after, like, three years, it's just getting old. I'm going to say this scheme is back, but please... Please, Hendrick Motorsports, Chase Elliott, do us all a solid, and please, please bring us a different scheme. Bring us something fresh. Stop with the Bill Elliott or the Elliott family throwbacks. I'm sorry, they're getting old. Moving on. All right, our next scheme is Eric Amarillo's number 10 Smithfield Ford Mustang. And oh my god, this scheme is back, baby, back. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna, I'm sorry, I just spoiled the, uh, the, uh, how I feel about this scheme, but oh my god, I love it. Like, look at this. This is Tony Stewart's 2002 Pontiac Grand Prix scheme, the same scheme he won the 2002 championship in and get used to hearing Tony Stewart winning a championship in this video because there's three of them. I mean, like, look at this. The, the Smithfield, Smithfield absolutely works on this car. It works on this car. I, I absolutely love it. It's one for one, an accurate representation of Tony Stewart's 2002 car with some slight changes to it. Well, okay, first off, you see that JD logo right there? That's, uh, that wasn't, that wasn't there on the old, on the O2 car. I'm not, I'm pretty sure about that. Okay, granted, it's a Ford, and this is a throwback to a Pontiac, but throw that aside, because this game is amazing to look at. It's absolutely just eye candy. The, in fact, this was actually one of the schemes from when I first became a fan back in 2002, so, hey, I can't control what throwbacks come to Darlington and what schemes don't come to Darlington. All I can tell you is this scheme is just absolutely back. And I know I said that earlier, but I love this scheme. And I would love to see it again in the 2000 to 2004 throwbacks. Like, it's that good. Just, just, uh, don't, don't bring it back on multiple occasions. Like, you know, if you catch my drift. Alright, so this was one of the first throwbacks revealed way back in Sonoma, and you can tell by the 350 logo there, and the 50th anniversary Sonoma logo there, but let's move on. So Daryl Waltrip's retiring from the booth in, at the end of this race. Everyone knows it. So what does Denny Hamlin do? He decides to reveal his Darlington throwback on this very weekend. So when they get there, they reveal the throwback, and it's a throwback to Daryl Waltrip's 1991 Chevrolet Lumina when he raced for his own team, sponsored by Western Auto Parts. So here's what I like about this. It's actually very, very accurate to what the to the scheme that it's re that is representing. You can see that it starts from white, and then it just gets into a darker shade of gray until actually at the back when you get all black, when you can see all black. So here's the orange stripe that was ac that's accurate, unlike Stenhouse's logo, unlike Stenhouse's car, which was red. And then you got like the chrome, I believe that's chrome 11 there. It's absolutely gorgeous. This scheme, I don't have any personal connections to this scheme because I was born in 1995, uh, September 23rd, if you care about the day. But I know you don't, so I'm moving on. This scheme is absolutely lovable to is lovable i think this car would look great in victor lane i say this scheme is back or just back you can never go against a daryl wall trip scheme
unless you don't do the colors right. Looking at you, Stenhouse in Fifth Third Bank. Pennzoil, Pennzoil, Pennzoil. We need to talk. Last year, you gave us this gorgeous, and I mean absolutely gorgeous throwback that I gushed over when you threw it back to Steve Park, one of the more obscure drivers in NASCAR, by the way. I mean, yeah, he had a bad, he had it rough in his career. An injury just absolutely derailed his entire career. And I feel bad for Steve Park. And, but, and seeing that scheme back just made me all giddy inside, like, oh, that was amazing. But here, you decided to throw it back to 1990 with Michael Waltrip. Why? Why would you want to throw it back to that bum? That legacy of failure. He, is, he only has four wins. And all four of them came on super speedways with two Daytona 500s. Why? I am not a fan of this scheme. I mean, I get it. It's accurate. I mean, I like how you're accurate to it, but joke's on you. It's not going to save you. It, it's not going to save you. I'm sorry. You could have thrown it back to... Oh, let me see here. You could have thrown it back to Sam Hornish Jr. You could have thrown it back to Elio Castroneves. You could have thrown it back to team to the first Team Penske race car that they owned, you know? You could have thrown it back to the first NASCAR race car Team Penske owned. You could have thrown it back to 2012. Yeah. Oh, wait, no. Not 2012. That would be a Kozlowski throwback. Never mind. Um, you could have thrown it back to Kurt Busch's 2007 All-Star car. You could have thrown it back to... Um, you could throw it back to any car in the world that would that from from 2000. Let me let me think about this. 2000. Yeah, 2014 on back, and any race car from that from that from 2014 on back from from there. Any car from 2014 or earlier, you could have thrown it back to any car in the world, and you chose this one. What in the hell were you all thinking? This game does not come back. No, do not bring it back. This game is whack. Never come back. No, no. Delete. Delete it. Delete it. Get it out of my face. Get it out of my sight. This game is horrible. This game is a steaming pile of shit. In fact, even what makes this even worse is Ryan Blaney had an amazing throwback last year, and I gushed over that one. You blew it. You went, and you blew it. I'm sorry, you blew it! You had a chance to, to impress me again and you blew it! Alright, moving on to our next throwback scheme. I'm sorry, to our next Darlington scheme. Ty Dillon, Jermaine Racing, we gotta talk about this. What in your... What in your minds made you think that bringing this game, this game that we have not seen since June, would be a brilliant idea. Hey, did you forget about our primaries game? Well, here it is. It's headed off to Darlington. Hooray! No. No. Shame on you. Bad. Bad team. Bad. You could have thrown it back to Jerry Nadeau's 1998 first loan car. You could have thrown it back to Mike Skinner's 90s car when he was sponsored by the Lowe's. You could have thrown it back to Steve Park, Jeff Green's AOL car. You're an RCR satellite team. You have these throwbacks in your in your back laundry as well. Oh my god. But no, 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 no. We're going to bring back a car that nobody has seen since June. Oh, oh, and even better. In the end of the 2016 season, we're going to cut Casey Mears. Why? Because screw everyone here is tying to win. Hooray! Everyone's going to like Ty Dillon, right? No, no, no. I'm sorry. Ty Dillon winning two stages means nothing to me. It means nothing. Nothing! If you're not winning races, you mean nothing to me. If you have not won a race in the past, you mean nothing to me. And Ty Dillon means nothing to me because he's a talentless hack who should not be behind the wheel of these cup cars. Get him out of here! Put Daniel Hamrick behind the wheel of this car. Put Jeb Burton behind the wheel of this car. Put Ryan Sig behind the wheel of this race car. Anyone would be better than Ty Dillon. Anyone would be better than Ty Dillon. 
As for your scheme, no, get it out of here. No, no, I gave you three throwbacks that were way better than this one. And no, no, you're going to bring this one? No, nope, no, nope, I'm sorry, your scheme is whack. Get this, get this modern pile of shit out of here. Next game, before I get even more pissed off about this. So our next scheme is Clint Boyer's number 14, Rush Truck Center's Mobile One Ford Mustang, and oh my gosh, this scheme is back. It's back. I haven't seen it in eight years, and it's back. Oh my gosh, I love it. This is a throwback to Tony Stewart's 2011 Office Depot Mobile One Chevrolet Impella, which won Tony Stewart's third and final championship. Oh my gosh, I never thought I'd say it again. Ah, it's so accurate. Oh my gosh, it's accurate down to the details. Oh my god. Oh my god, this game. Oh my gosh, they even put mobile one on the side. I love that. Ah, I am so, I am in love with this game. Oh my gosh, this, this game is just gorgeous to look at. It's absolute eye candy. And this game was one of the two schemes involved in the closest championship battle ever in NASCAR history. They had to go to wins as the tiebreaker, and Tony Stewart won that by a win count of five to one. It was just amazing. Oh, if only Carl Edwards had won that championship. I, I would have been happy with the outcome either way. Carl Edwards is a likable guy. And Tony Stewart, he's just feisty, and he showed it on the racetrack. That night in Homestead in 2011. This game, uh, if I if you haven't figured it out yet, that yeah, this this game is back, and I and I really want to see it come back when the Darlington Throwback theme is 2010 to 2014. I would love to see it back then, not before then, but at that point, at that point, that would be right. Moving on. All right, everyone, raise your hands if you actually liked Kyle Busch's Snickers Creamery card back from Atlanta. Okay, put your hands up because I know you're full of shit! Okay, this car, though, screams Snickers brand. I absolutely love it. it. This is a throwback to Bobby Hillen Jr.'s number 19, number 8 Buick Regal, sponsored by, you guessed it, Snickers. What is it with Kyle Busch and bringing back these amazing throwbacks? Anytime they run the throwback schemes, they are eye candy to look at. Speaking of candy, it's sponsored by the Candy Bar Snickers. What more could you ask for? <laughs> anyway, like in 2016, they brought back the 1993 Interstate Batteries car, and I just gushed over it. I absolutely like that one. 
they didn't do a throwback from 2017, and I was just like, why? I love the Kyle Busch throwbacks. And then 2018, they brought back the, they brought back Ernie Irvin's Skittles car, and I absolutely gushed over it. Like, I could not even, in, like, begin to tell you how much I loved that car. Like, it was great. I loved seeing that car. It, but I, and this, this scheme is no different. All we need now is, is, is an M&M's throwback, and Kyle Busch will have every single car that he's driven, spot, that, was, that was sponsored by the Mars brands, actually um, covered in, in, in terms of throwbacks. Like, it'd be nice. Maybe he could throw back to 2009 with them. Um, where he scored his, where he scored Toyota's first win. Maybe he could throw it back to 2015 when he won the controversial 2015 championship, which honestly Harvard should have won. But I digress. Maybe he could throw it back to. Maybe he could. I don't. I don't know. There's, there's just so many good throwbacks that he could do from in the future, like for M and M's. Like, go, go wild with it. So, uh, but anyway, in terms of this scheme for this year. You know how I'm going to rate this one. This scheme is absolutely back, baby, back. Love it. Want to see more of it. Maybe I will when, when, it's on, when, when it shows up on the cameras. <laughs> Who knows? We'll see. Hello, Joe Gibbs Racing. Uh, can I talk to Joe Gibbs in particular? Yeah, we have a problem. Uh, Teresa Earnhardt called me. She wants you to know that she's not happy that you're running a replica of a Dale Earnhardt Incorporated scheme from 2004. A lawsuit could be impending. Uh, what would you like me to tell her? Oh, wait. You're telling me that this isn't a Dale Earnhardt Incorporated scheme? This came from Chance Team Motorsports, which was Dale Jr.'s first attempt at owning a race team. Oh, and you want me to add a stick it in there for good measures? All right, then. All right, all joking aside about this, this scheme is actually the same scheme that Martin Truex Jr. raced back in 2004 when he won the first of his two NASCAR Xfinity Series titles. Actually, fun fact, he won the following year in 2005, and I think that was when he drove the Dale Earnhardt Incorporated Bush Series car, but I'm not sure about that. Anyway, this game is absolutely eh, okay. It's not memorable for me by any stretch of imagination. Like, I'm probably going to watch the race and be like, oh yeah, that, that throwback's okay. And, and anytime they show it on camera, they're like, oh my gosh, this, this game is... This game is fine, but to me, it's not one of the more memorable ones like the Rainbow Warrior or Dale Sr.'s 95 All-Star Car or Ernie Irvin throwback that Kyle Busch ran last year or the Wrangler Car Austin Dillon and Ryan Newman ran in 2017 or like Dale Jr.'s Volvoline Car, which he threw back to Kelly Yarbrough in the first year of throwbacks. Um, there are honestly a lot of memorable throwbacks over the years that I've gushed over and loved, but this scheme just isn't one of those one of those schemes. I'm sorry if you're a Truex Jr. fan. I am sincerely sorry, but this scheme is whack. I just don't want to see it ever. I, I just don't want to see it again. And chance are they're probably going to bring it back for like the 2002-2004 theme, so which means I'm going to have to see it again. And I'm going to probably say the same thing I said back in, that I said this year. Just probably say the same thing. Okay, moving on to the next scheme. All right, so before I get started, this is actually me congratulating Eric Jones on making his 100th Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series start. So here's your round of applause, Jones. All right, enough about enough of that. Let's talk about the scheme. So over on Amino, and I'll leave a link to my Darlington Throwback Reviews post link. No, the link to my Amino post, which is uh, this lap around cars for Darlington Review, in the description down below as well. So there's going to be a lot of links to NASCAR related stuff in this one. I absolutely went to town just railing about how I had to do research on this scheme, how I didn't like the numbers didn't match. Okay, to be fair, to be fair, I can understand the top, the number on the top. If you made the top number red, then it would just blend in with the red stripe that you see running from the from the hood all the way to the to the rear deck lid. To be fair, I can understand that, but the side numbers, come on, you could have made those red, man. Anyway, this is actually a throwback to Eric Jones' 2012 rookie late model car which actually had a lot of people concerned that he was going to be leaving the 20 team for Levine Family Racing's 95. I highly doubt that. 
I mean, with the news of Matt DiBenedetto leaving, I mean, it almost felt like it was going to be true. But anyway, look at how accurate this scheme is, though. It's pretty accurate to, you got the checkered flags on the hood, the sports clip moved their logo down to, like, to, like, underneath the checkered flags. This, this scheme is, it, I like the scheme and all, but it's just kind of bland to me. It, I mean, it's rare you see black cars these days. I mean, God knows what, I would love to see more black cars. But this this scheme just doesn't do it for me. I like the I like the nod to like to Eric Jones driving late models and all, and I, I get that it's his one hundredth start, but I'm just not a fan of this scheme. I don't know what it is. This this scheme is black for me. It's it's black. I'm 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 just gonna be fair and give it a black. Moving on. All right, our next scheme we have is Paul and Arzor 21, Motorcraft, Quick Lane, Ford, Mustang, and oh my god, this scheme is gorgeous. This scheme is a throwback to the late Glenwood, rest in peace, number 21 Ford Sunliner that he drove in the last ever Daytona Beach and Road Course race. Like, how do you even say that this game is bad. I have yet to, I just want to gush over this game because of how amazing it looks. Like, it's, the the number matches up to the font from 57. They put Motocraft on, on the side of the, on the sides of the hood. Oh my, like, it's gorgeous. How do you, how, what do you want me to say about this? That I, this without just being like, repeating myself. Like, it's, it's amazing. I love it. This game is one of my favorite throwbacks of this year, and much like a few of these other schemes that I've talked about in this video, this scheme is absolutely back. Nothing could top this scheme in terms of classy, of how classy it is. It's, it's gorgeous. I love it. I love it. Next game. Hey, Joey Logano, 2010 called. They want your quote back. And the reason I say that is because that you're now it's your wife who's wearing the fire suit in your family. So who's laughing now? That's right, us. <laughs> anyway, this scheme is a throwback to the 2007 Pennzoil shell car, which actually was driven by Kevin Harvick, who is still racing. Irony at its finest. <laughs> anyway, this scheme is actually Pennzoil and Shell giving a nod and thanking uh, Richard Childress, can actually, thanking Richard Childress Racing for being part of their history, as well as congratulating them on 50 years of racing. Very classy touch, team. Very classy touch, Ben's Oil. I'm, I like it. I like how you're, how you're not being, how you have no hard feelings about that when you, when they kicked you, when they left, when you guys left in 2010. Like, I guess contract negotiations fell through in, in 2010, so that you moved to Team Penske in 2011. So is is that what happened? I'm I'm guessing that's what happened. Anyway, this game is very much accurate to how it looked in 2007 when Kevin Harvick won the Daytona 500. And in fact, I'm actually glad this game is back. It, it's nice to see it again from dig up from the NASCAR archives and the history books. Like my. I would complain about them not actually matching up to the font, but then again, you remember that this is Team Penske. I say Shell and Pennzoil have a great throwback. You guys have a great throwback. Pennzoil Menards, on the other hand, shame on you. Shame on you all. This game is absolutely back, but by no means of imagination is it going to be like a throwback of the year nomination for me, but it's a good scheme. I do like it. it it's back. Absolutely back. Next game, please. All right. As an Asker fan, I have a confession to make, and... I'm probably going to piss off a lot of people when I say this, but I have never watched Days of Thunder. How do I know this is from Days of Thunder? Because when this game was revealed, everybody was talking about it. <laughs> also, I do know some lines from Days of Thunder just by reading my quotes from other people. Like, so, so City, Chevrolet, Hendrick, Auto Guard, Chevrolet Camaro being driven by William Byron. I mean... What more do you want me to say? It's green and yellow. I mean, I'm glad they they didn't bring the rainbow car back and all, but at the same time, 
this part actually stands out, like, in, in its own right, in its own merits, it stands out, like, how do you not want this, how do you not like this scheme, like, even if you're not a Days of Thunder fan, you've clearly had to have seen this scheme before, and in fact, I actually have, in 2012, when Kurt Busch raced it at Daytona. Or was it 2011? Was it 2011 or was it 2012? I don't remember. But anyway, Kurt Busch raced this exact scheme with the number one car in the Nationwide Series, as it was then formerly known, for Phoenix Racing, and it looked amazing. I actually, I actually liked it. I just remember liking it. And once again, I'm happy to say that this scheme is is actually good. It's just not a throwback of the year nomination worthy for me. Like that that's all I'm gonna say on that. And with that being said, I say this game is back. This game is absolutely back. I, I just don't want to see them bring it back next year and be like, we're throwing it back to last year. Then I'll just say, nope, I'm sorry. I I've, I've had enough of, of repeat throwbacks. This game is whack. Like so just, just don't bring it back next year. Next game, please. Hey, is anyone hungry for crunch? For some reason, I want crunch and I want a crunch bar, and I don't know why. Excuse me, I gotta, I gotta go see if I have any crunch bars around the house, around, around where I live. So let, I'll, I'll be right back. Uh, uh, yeah, let me look. Uh, you know, just, just let, let me look. Let, let, let me, let me, let, let me, let me look. You know, it's, it's got, we gotta have crunch bars around here somewhere. Is there any in the freezer? There's no crunch bars in the freezer! What do you mean? Any in this freezer over here? No, there's no crunch bars in here either! No! Guys, I have bad news! I have absolute bad news! I don't have any crunch bars! I am so sad I don't want crunch bars! I don't know why I want crunch bars! Wait! Now I know why I want crunch bars! This, this game is actually throwing it back to Dale Jarrett's Pontiac Grand Prix from the NASCAR Bush Series, as it was known then. In fact, it was Bush Series as I was growing up until, like, 2008, I believe. Anyway, this game is an absolute one-for-one -one replica of Dale Jarrett's 1990s Pontiac Grand Prix that he drove in the Bush Series, and I absolutely love it. Do you know what makes it even better? They actually, Keenports.com, actually went out of their way and made their logo look like the Nestle Crunch logo. I give you all props for that. Like, it's absolutely hysterical and lovable. Speaking of lovable, LaJoy is actually a really, really great driver. Like, his stats this year, or from prior years, don't back that up, but he is absolutely talented behind the wheel. In fact, he's improved his average finish from this year, and I saw that somewhere on Facebook, like, it was amazing, like, I was blown away that LaJoy's actually talented, yeah, so I, I could see LaJoy actually getting a win sometime in the future, whether it be with Go Fast Racing, who will actually have Stuart Haas Racing backing next year, at least that's rumored right now, and it's not confirmed, but anyway, you gotta, you gotta admit, this game is absolutely great, I, I love it. I want to I I want to see this scheme again, like maybe not with LaJoy's team, but maybe with uh, Chevrolet team, or maybe LaJoy's team will be kind enough to bring it back next year, and I just and I can get all giddy about it again and want crunch bars all over again. I just don't want crunch bars though. I'm but yes, this this scheme is back, and as a bonus, yes, this scheme does get the Mooch nomination for Throwback of 2019. We can throw that in alongside Clint Boyer's scheme, Eric Amarola's scheme, Landon Castle's scheme, Paul Menard's scheme. Uh, there's probably a few others that I've missed. But this, this scheme is back. It's absolutely back. It's back and then some. Oh boy, it's a front row motorsports car. I know what scheme is coming next. Let's just look up and just get this over with. And oh my god, it's not a love travel stop scheme. I am pleasantly surprised by this. Oh, no, wait, wait, I'm sorry, hold on, we have Matt Tift and uh, David Reagan to go through yet, so, um, of course I'm still gonna worry about the Love Travel Stop Canopy car being back. Anyway, as for this scheme, this is a throwback to Jimmy Means' Alka Seltzer number 52 car that he drove from the late 80s to early 90s. 
Now, and now, actually, once again, I gotta applaud Dockside Logistics for, for doing this. Like, they actually matched up to the Alka Seltzer logo. Like, I mean, I know they have probably had to add the, the red under there for, like, for, um, for, uh, so they can put their, their, uh, what they're known for on the on the car, or unless the Alka Seltzer actually um, actually does that as well. I mean, I'm not sure about that. I have to look at the Alka Seltzer logo from '92. But but anyway, this scheme is actually great. In fact, fun fact: if you did not do your research, this is actually this scheme is also how the team owner Bob Jenkins got into um, got into owning a race team. Like it, it started off with as uh, Means Jenkins Racing. That team lasted for a year, and then in '90. 1992 or 1993 maybe i think it was 92 and then jenkins and means parted ways and then bob jenkins went and founded front row motorsports and the rest is history this team has been is in for quite a thrill ride you know no i'm sorry i did not mean that i'm no this 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 team has been quite a thrill to watch over the years like you're, you're just watching them and you're thinking either they're gonna either they're gonna do something spectacular that we've never seen before or they're just going to be field fillers. More often than not, they are field fillers, but they actually have come through and delivered us surprises, like David Reagan and Saladega win. Um, they've delivered us amazing throwback schemes from for over the years. Like, like I'm, I'm, I've absolutely blown away. I'm blown away by this scheme. Like, it's not throwback of the year nomination worthy for me, but I do like it. I, it's, it's a simple color. It's a simple color scheme. And sometimes standing out means being simple, like 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 this car here. Let you see. I absolutely like this scheme. And now, hey, the 34 actually matches the font of the 52 that that they're throwing back to. Nice touch there. This scheme is back. I I like this scheme. I'm gonna move on to the next scheme. Whew, for a second there, I was actually worried that Tiff was gonna have the love travel stuff canopy car. Wait, David Reagan still has yet to be. We still have yet to go over Reagan's store back, and I'm still worried about that little shot will stop scheme popping up again. Anyway, this scheme is a throwback to a late model that Matt Tiff's father, Quentin Tiff, actually owned back in, like, I believe the 80s, 90s. How old is Tiff, anyway? I don't know. Anyway, this scheme is a throwback to the late model that his dad owned, and according to Tiff, David Hilliker is actually... Or is it Hilliker? Is it Hilliker? I don't know how you pronounce that. So if I messed it up, I'm sorry. It, this is actually a throwback to the late model his dad owned that Hilliker drive in. You can act, Tift actually says that Hilliker, or is it Hilliker? Um, he says that 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 um, his childhood hero was actually Hillike, Hilliker. So it's actually nice to see simple schemes like this show up. Like you don't expect them, but when they show up in this day and age when everyone's trying to be bold and 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 stand and trying to stand out by being bold like everyone's going bold these days and you're just like sometimes sometimes i just want to see a simple scheme and along comes a car like this along comes a car like like um like uh De like mcdowell's car that we saw along comes a race car like um along comes schemes like like those and you're just like it's so nice to see teams actually go back to being simple. I I love it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Well, this, again, not a throwback of the year nomination for me. This scheme is absolutely back, and I wouldn't mind seeing another simple scheme from Matt Tift or the Front Row Motorsports teams. I applaud you guys for being simple this year. Good job. Keep it going. Hopefully you got one for us next year. All right, so the next game that we're going to be reviewing for Darlington is Chris Busher's Kroger Fast Lane to Flavors card. Now, I don't blame JGT Doherty for not bringing a throwback on Chris Busher's car. And I think the reason is last year, in 2017, he brought this gorgeous number 37 card that I absolutely gushed over and I was just like I love this game and then in 2018 last year I should say they brought this Bush's baked bean baked beans car and I was just not impressed by it at all and and I was just like why did you do this what is this even a throwback like I get what it's a throwback to but I don't like it I absolutely hate this scheme like 
I trashed, in fact, it was critically panned by some other YouTubers that actually did throwback videos that year, Double E in particular. Anyway, this game is more of a, like, oh, we're, these, these are going to be the, the sponsors that you see during this time frame of the season. So, this, this game isn't a throwback by any means, but it's actually kind of cool to look at. I like how it, like, start how it looks like a flag waving, like, uh, some, something like that, I guess, or, like, it's, it's cool, I, I like it, the, the matte, the black background, and the, the black running all the way to, like, the B post, to, um, to, like, near the end of the C post, middle of the C post, like, that's cool, this game is cool, wait, is that a Sunoco Rookie of the Year logo from 2016 and 17? from, like, 2016 on the side of his car. What is that doing there? What the hell? Chris Bush is not a rookie. He's been in the Cup Series since 2016. What the hell? Oh, my God. I didn't even notice that. What is going on? What in the actual heck? Anyway, this game is absolutely good. I, I like it. This game is back. I wouldn't, mind to I wouldn't mind seeing it again down the road. Maybe we will see it down the road. Who knows? Actually, I do want to see a Chris Bush or Clorox car. That'd be dope. That'd be dope as all fuck. Moving on to the next game. Wait, you mean we're not getting a Love Travel Stop car this year? By the gods, someone at Front Row Motorsports heard my cries and my complaints. Anyway, this game is a throwback to David Pearson. Now, I do have some complaints about it, though. First off, why does the yellow not match the, um, does not match David Pearson's Yellow from, from his car from back in 69, I believe it was. Why is the hood white? Like, seriously. I, I don't get it. I mean, I could understand this for if, uh, say, a company like Kroger decided to run with a white hood because their logo is all blue. Like, what's Schrader's Hospital's excuse? I mean, I, I don't get it. See, and look, look, they have the logo in white. They could have just taken the white logo and moved it to the hood, blew it up, moved, did some moving around, made the hood blue, and you'd still have no issue with it. Seriously, why? Okay, to be fair, this is David, okay. Okay, I, I, I have no defense for that. It's a, it's, it's a minor nitpick and all, but still. Maybe, I hope they made some adjustments to the, to the yellow on the hood, though. That, um, I'm in the roof of the car, that'd be great. If they did that, like, like, do the wheels even match the same yellow that that um that Dave Pearson had back in the day when he drove the 17? I don't think it does. Oh my god! If that's not the oh my god, this this version of the scheme needs to be adjusted. But all the complaints aside, it is a very nice touch that to see like NASCAR legends getting a, getting thrown back to. But We've seen David Pearson thrown back to before in 2017 with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Cargrill. Cargill? Cargrill? Was it Cargrill? Yeah, it was Cargrill. Cargrill. And oh my gosh, that scheme was gorgeous. Here, it's just like, okay, you're throwing it back to David Pearson, but it just does not match. It does not match the car that you're throwing back to. And I mean, I, I like how it's how Shriners Hospital is actually stepping up and getting their name out there like Hey, we, 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 we like to help kids, and I, I like that and all, but this game, it, it, it's not Throwback of the Year nomination. If, if they did not make the proper adjustments to it, it, it's not Throwback of the Year nomination for me. I'll, I will say it's back, but not by much. That, that's all I'm going to say on this one. So, moving on to the next game. I, I don't know why I'm not feeling nostalgic for this game. I mean... It's it's simple, yeah, and like I said, being simple is, is sometimes a good thing, but you know what it is? It's the fact that they tried to put Haas, yeah, Haas, in Home Depot, in Home Depot font and logo, and it just doesn't work. Home Depot, you let us down. You're your former driver, Tony Stewart, you know, the guy that took you to victory lane countless times in, their, in, your, in the heyday, and then won you two championships during that heyday time frame in 2002 and 2005, is going to the NASCAR Hall of Fame, and you can't even bother to be on one Stewart, uh, one Tony Stewart-owned race car for just one race? Just one race? That's all I ask for! 
This team would have benefited from having Home Depot on the car. This team would have benefited from this because I would actually have the total nostalgia for it. Be like, oh, this game is simple, but it's so it's so cool to see Home Depot back on the race car. But no, 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 we're, nope, screw that. Nope, we're, nope, we're not coming back. Nope, nope. Just, just, just get that NASCAR, get that NASCAR stitch out of here. We don't want to. We, we do not acknowledge that we were in NASCAR ever. Like, like screw you, people. Like, I, I, I get what Haas was, what Haas was doing. I mean, it's, it's a nice touch. I, I appreciate your efforts, but it just does not work for you guys. Ares could get away with it in 2016 because they had like, because I, I kind of just get away with that in 2016 because I remember liking that scheme from that year. The Lenny Carl Edwards ran the uh, Tony Stewart throwback to 99. It, 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 that was a cool scheme. I loved that one. But this, this, the Haas just doesn't work for it. Like, I, I'm, I don't know why, but it just does not work for me. I, it just does not, the Haas, the Home Depot font just does not work for Haas. I, I don't like it. I'm sorry. If you're, if you're nostalgic for this scheme and you like it, Good on you. I like it, but I don't like it at the same time, and that's because of the sponsor. This game is black for me. Oh my god, it's a Ricky Craven throwback. I love these Ricky Craven throwbacks. They're amazing to look at. Okay, so to be so in 2015, the first ever throwback year, GoFast Racing actually brought the um the tide car back and matched up the font to, of the 32 to the font of the car they were throwing back to it. I, I absolutely loved it. In 2007, in 2016, Matt Kenseth brought the Tide car back, and I was like, oh my god, I love this scheme. I absolutely love it. Like, I don't care what year they, you bring it back in or what car make it on. Tide cars are never, are, Tide cars are never bad. No, Tide cars, Tide cars can come back at any given year and you just be like, I love this game! At least for me, anyway. Anyway, and this game is no different. I love Ricky Craven throwbacks. Like, okay, and this game is a throwback to Ricky Craven's 1995 Kodiak Chevrolet Monte Carlo. You know, it's been a couple... Uh, the, the Monte Carlo was in... Came in 94. That Well, they brought it back in for 94. And then in 95, Ricky Craven stepped, uh, stepped up to Larry Hendrick Motorsports. Like, no, no, I don't think there's any relation to Rick Hendrick. Or by any stretch of imagination, I'd be surprised if there was. And at least I don't think there was any relation. Anyway, and and this was the car they brought forth with Kodiak on the car. So Larson and his team last year had this gorgeous, and I mean absolute gorgeous replica replica of Davy Allison's 1988 rookie car, and I gushed over it. I absolutely loved it. And once again, I'm gushing over this game. I love it. They they matched it up. They matched up the colors. They 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 went out of their way and made it so accurate. I swear, I'm looking at a race car from 1995 with Chip Ganassi fun, with Chip Ganassi racing all over the car. Like I'm in love with this game. Absolutely back throwback of the year nomination. I'm adding that to the list. Oh man! Can someone? I, I'm actually going to have to put in the description a list of all the schemes that I actually think are throwback of the year nominations, as well as Kurt Busch's number one car. Yes, Kurt Busch's one car, Kozlowski's two car. Uh, there's Landon Castle's double zero car. Uh, I'll have to go and and uh, reread my Amino post about that, but I will be sure to put all the throwbacks that I thought would be throwback of the year nominations in the description down below as well. So that's gonna be fun. All right, moving on to the next scheme. All right, moving on here, we have Bubba Wallace's number 43 car. And this is actually a throwback to the late Adam Petty in more ways than one. Just, okay, first off, let's talk about the scheme, which is the exact same scheme that Adam Petty raced when he won his first and only ARCA race in 1998. The car was sponsored by Spree, which was a prepaid fun card, or was it a fun card? I, I don't remember. By the way, this scheme is absolutely great to look at. Like you got the day glow orange, and then you got the yellow. You got the yellow, the yellow line blocking the black and the forty. No, you got the yellow line between the, the purple and orange, and then there's another yellow line that that protects the that that separates the purple from the green, 
and then it, it's it's a great scheme all around. And on the hood and on the side of the car, as you can tell, is Victory Junction, which is a serious fun camp. At least that's what the hood seems to say. Anyway, they're celebrating their 15th anniversary of being in of being in of of operations, which is really cool. And it's really nice that they that they actually brought an Adam Petty scheme and put Victory Junction on the car because this was actually Adam Petty's dream of helping out kids in with serious illnesses. And and he just couldn't see it through because he passed away tragically in two thousand in a in a practice crash out in New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Man, if he was around today, he would it, I'm pretty sure he would actually help out Richard Petty Motorsports in, and actually improve that team. This scheme is absolutely back in my books. And in fact, I will take it one step further and say that I am happy to report that this scheme, much like some of the other schemes that I've talked about on this list, is a throwback of 2019 nominee. Mooch seal of approval. All right, so our next scheme on the Darlington Throwback list is Ryan Priest's number 47 Kroger Chevrolet, Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 that is throwing it back to Ron Beauchard's 1984 Buick Regal, which was sponsored by Magic Martin and Tropical Punch. So there are things I do like about the scheme and things that I don't like about it, but I do understand why they went with that choice. For example, let's start with the white hood. Like, the, I, I'll get to that. I'll get to the spoiler later. But first, let's talk about the hood. The hood is all white because if you actually stop and think about it, if you really made this, if you made the hood blue, it would just it would just blend in with you. You wouldn't be able to tell what was where. You wouldn't even see the letters at the bottom of at the edge of the hood, which is pickup delivery ship. All you would see is Kroger.com, the the Kroger word on the on the hood. You wouldn't even see the truck. You'd see the little Kroger wording here, and you'd be like, "Is that supposed to be where the truck is supposed to be? Um, why the white circle on the hood? Is is that part of the design? No, that's where the logo should be, actually." So I understand why they did that. The spoiler is actually white over here on Beauchard's car, but here on Prius's car, you see that it's black. Why? I, 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 even I don't know that answer. Also, another thing I don't like is how they went with the modern JGT Doherty font instead of matching up to Beauchard's font that they have here. Like, that would have been amazing if they matched it up to Beauchard's font. Like, you know, I mean, I guess the, uh, the JGT Doherty font almost looks similar, but almost looking similar and being exactly the same as are two very different things. Aside from those minor complaints, while this is not a throwback of the year nomination for me, it gets a solid approval and is back in my books. I, I, I applaud this scheme. I, I like it. I, it's also red and blue, so it also helps that this car is done right. I love red and blue cars. Only if you do them right. If you do them wrong, then I'm sorry, I can't, I can't get behind it. Okay, moving on to the next scheme. So, Jimmy Johnson had ties to Chevrolet before he stepped into NASCAR? All right, well, I'm not going to question that. Let's talk about this scheme here because, oh my gosh, is this scheme gorgeous. First off, let's look at the hood. There's no LSD trip on the hood. That, that's a positive in my books already. Second off, if you look very closely, you can see that it's a lightning bolt scheme. When are lightning bolt schemes never cool? I'm not sure if that's like supposed to be pink or if that's like a light, very light orange, but I can tell you that's supposed to be purple. It, it looks great. I love it. This is also a throwback to, as you can see there, there's the car it's going back to, Jimmy Johnson's 1995 trophy truck car that he raced. Actually, the, the truck is, itself is a 1990. Chevrolet Thunder Sports side, which he raced for, I believe it was Nelson Racing? Is, is that the team it was? I, I'd have to do my research on that to make sure I'm right. And I'll, put, I'll probably, I'll put it somewhere in, in like a little note somewhere in this video that, on this thin, on this little bit here that, that I've, if I'm right or wrong, but if I recall right, I remember seeing the reveal trailer be like, oh, this, this, he used to race this truck for Nelson Racing, and, and this is what he's throwing it back to. So, Anyway, this is like Jimmy John. It, this game is absolutely gorgeous. Like I said, lightning bolt schemes are never not cool. 
I love lightning bolt schemes. Uh, if you do them right, by the way, if you do them right, like Jeff Burton's XI Batteries car from back in the day, or like Matt Tavetta Dennis throwback to, to that Jeff Burton car that I just talked about from last year. Oh my gosh, lightning bolt schemes done right are cool. Like if you do them wrong though, you're, you're just like, no, no. So this game is absolutely back, and Jimmy Johnson, you guys get a, get a round of applause for me because you get a nomination for Throwback of the Year. Good job. Good job. All right, raise your hands if you knew this game from Stroker Race. Okay, you can put your hands down because I know you're lying. Hell, even I didn't know this game from Stroker Race. I thought this came from Days of Thunder, but nope, I was wrong. It's Stroker Ace. Okay, this is also a Burt Reynolds movie, so rest in peace, Burt Reynolds. We miss you. Anyway, the story behind this scheme is that Burt Reynolds plays this character named Stroker Ace. Roll credits. And he's like a three-time NASCAR champion. Okay, okay, movie lore. Deal with it. So he, so Stroker Ace has a fallout with his commercial sponsor, and then he's and then with some pressure from this dude named Clyde Torkel who owns this fried chicken chain, and the and Torkel's assistant, whose name is, and I kid you not, Pembroke Feeney. <laughs> Stroker signs a contract without reading the obligations that will be bestowed upon him. Remember, kids, always, I mean always read the obligations of the fine print. So he signs the contract, and after he signs the contract, he finds out that he's trapped in this very shitty contract with no end in sight. And that's just the basic plot synopsis that I found on Google, just by looking at the race cars. Fun fact. As for the scheme itself, it's a simple red, and what I actually applaud is that they actually use the font that the fried chicken chain uses. And, then, and instead of a piece of fried chicken, it's an excavator. That's hilarious. I don't know what it says on the side, but it's, I think it's like, I think it's supposed to say like fastest builders in the South, maybe? I, I don't know. But either way, this game is absolutely, is absolutely nice to look at. I mean, it's not like loud and bolstering and like, like, oh, look at me. I'm trying to be flashy and cool. Like all the, all the cool kids in the 90s. This is more like, nope, we're going back to the 80s. When it was much simpler, and this scheme is just a simple red, just just everything else is good about it. So anyway, this scheme I'm going to give a pass by the threat of its wheel, of its tires. It's not by any means of a throwback of year nomination. Sorry, Stroke Race fans, if you, any of you Stroke Race fans are out there. Um, the, the scheme is back though. I I do appreciate simple schemes sometimes, and this is another case of a simple scheme done right. Can someone answer this for me? Why is Jacob Company why is Jacob Companies on two Rick Ware racing cars? Doesn't that seem a little suspicious to anyone? Something very screwy about that. But like I said, over on the NASCAR Amino, if there's one thing, if there's a couple things I can praise Rick Ware racing for, one of them is that they actually give drivers a, ch a chance in the Cup Series. Like, we've seen Spencer Boyd in the Cup Series, thanks to Rick Ware Racing. Uh, we've seen some other teams, some other drivers up there that got their first start with uh, Rick Ware Racing. So, thanks to them, some of these drivers that we kind of expect to hear in the Cup Series in the future actually got their first start in the Cup Series. Thanks to them. So, I can't fault them for that. Another thing I actually... Have, can't approve them, I can actually actually applaud them for it. Like I said over on the NASCAR Amino as well, is their paint booth. These guys go out of their way and make bad ass paint schemes. And this is another simple paint scheme. You thought um Paul Menard's 1959 scheme, which was actually on a 57 Ford Sunliner, there was the oldest throwback in this field. Bitch, please, this came from 1953. This is a throwback to Bill Blair's 1953 Oldsmobile, and they actually went out of their way and made it look like the Oldsmobile that Bill Blair drove in that time era. In fact, fun fact, while I was doing research for this scheme, turns out that Bill Blair actually won one of the Daytona beach and road course races. This is like on the track that started it all for NASCAR. Like, that's cool. I, I actually like this throwback. It's so historically cool. 
So yeah, this also comes from a time frame, from a time era where you actually like had to hand paint the numbers. Yeah, you didn't wrap them around the car like like you see today. No, you had no, you had to paint them on. Also, and back when electrical, also back in '53, electrical tape was used to, for to even have any remote design on a race car. Like, yep, yeah, let that sink in. Let that sink in, kitties. Like this game is like one of the coolest games that you're ever going to see. So also, um, fun fact about Bill Blair, he actually won three races, which for considering the time frame he was part of, not too shabby. But by today's standards, that would be like, you're a bust, goodbye. While it's not a stunner by any stretch of imagination, I am happy to report that this game is an absolute stunning car to look at. It's accurate to the car that it's throwing back to. They they even went out of their way to make it to make the design look like the Oldsmobile that they're throwing it back to. Accurate down to the detail. This scheme, I'm happy to report, is absolutely back. Hey, remember how I gave Rick Rare Racing's paint department praise for the throwback game being strong back when I talked about the number 52 car? Well, they did it again. This time, they got Garrett Smithley to give a nod to Lenny Pond's 1976 Pepsi-sponsored Laguna Power Slide. So I went on Racing Reference when I saw this game, just just to get an idea of Lenny Pond's career in a, in a, in a basic synopsis. And in his career, Lenny Pond had one win, 39 top fives, 88 top 10s, led 927 laps, and has an average finish of 17.9. I Now, sadly, he did pass away in February of 2016. Rest in peace. God. But I'm pretty sure he's probably sitting up there in heaven, sitting down at watching Darlington, and he sees that his car is back on the racetrack where it rightfully belongs, and he's probably got a seat along with all the other NASCAR legends like Dale Sr., Kale, um, Glenn Wood, Adam Petty, who would have been a NASCAR legend. Davey Allison, who would have been a NASCAR legend. Like, like, it's such an awesome thing to think about, really. I mean, it's sad that he's gone, but in a way, he's probably up in heaven watching the Darlington race, and he sees his scheme is back, and he's probably smiling about that. Like, like that's such a thing, that's such a cool thing to think about, though. It's actually nice to see schemes from like way back from when before I was born and like way before I became a fan. Like, it's so cool to because it gives me an excuse to do research on on drivers that I've probably never heard of or never even would have heard of if it wasn't for this for throwback schemes like this. Rick Ware Racing, you are three for three in the back department. Congratulations! You guys did a stellar job on your paint on your paint schemes this year. Please keep up the throwback work next year. Please do, because I love reviewing your throwbacks. I want to keep reviewing Rick Rare Racing throwbacks and talking about this team. I'm sorry. It is this this if they do throwbacks like like what they did with the 51 and the 52 and the 54 this year, I, I can't wait to see what throwbacks they have for the years to come. I'm sorry, that's just how it goes. Oh my god. What am I looking at? No, seriously, what am I looking at? Because this scheme is gorgeous. You know what? I'll tell you what I'm looking at. I'll tell you all what you all are looking at. You are looking at Reed Sorensen's number 77 Spire Motorsports Chevrolet Camaro, sponsored by, Mo by the Motor Racing Network. This, by far, is the coolest scheme that's not connected to any throwback at all, but rather it's connected to... MRN, which was founded in 1979. They have been in, they have been operating for 50 years now. 50 years! Could you imagine all the great iconic calls that they've made over the years? Like, it's just so cool to think about. Like, and in, in fact, even cooler, on the side of the car, you see like, the 11, the original 11 radio stations that have been cheering MRN since the day it was founded. Since the day they were created. Like, that's so cool. The number is gold. Like, like gold numbers. 
I like gold. I like the shiny. I like shiny things. Like I'm not kidding. I like seeing shiny things. MR. This is a great nod to MRN. They got the MRN blue down. They got the gold. They got the they got the gold number down. It's so cool. I, I I is that never supposed to be yellow or is that supposed to be gold? But they just couldn't get it like get it that metallic look. Either way, they, this this cover is so cool to look at. Like I can't stop gushing over it. Like I, this game is absolutely back. And as a bonus, this game is also getting a nomination for Throwback of the Year. Congratulations, Spider Motorsports! You guys killed it in the paint department this year, and I look forward to seeing your next throwback next year. Please step the throwback game up from this, because this is a very, this is a very good bar to start with. The legend NASCAR tried to forget about has lived on in the record books of the Racing League. That was until this year. Tim Richmond is finally getting the honors he deserves as his old Folgers coffee scheme will be gracing the Darlington Raceway once again. Tim Richmond is actually part of the reason why Hendrick Motorsports got on the map, and if he was still racing, like, in the 90s, I would have no doubt in my mind think that he would actually win a championship. But tragically, he passed away in 1989, and since then, NASCAR tried to sweep Tim Richmond under the rug. Why? I, I, even I have no idea. Richmond was an absolute wheelman behind the wheel. Was an absolute wheelman behind the wheel of his number 25 Folgers coffee car back in the day, back in his day, and and whenever Tim Richmond was on front, you just knew you were in. Trouble. It makes me wonder how many people are actually going to have a nostalgic, a nostalgic bias towards this scheme because of because they watched it race back in the day it was racing. Anyway, thank you, Exalta and Alex Bowen for bring for reviving this scheme and bringing it to the raceway. We I appreciate that. That. As for me, anyway, being born in the '90s is an absolute advantage because that just means I have no personal bias towards this scheme. I have no nostalgia for the scheme. All the schemes I have personal bias to are like 2000s to present. Maybe some late 90s schemes in there. So, and I don't have any fond memories of this scheme. It, but it's very simple and sometimes being simple works. Some companies need to learn that you don't need to be bold to make have an awesome scheme. Like seriously. Sometimes, like I said, being simple works. Look at this. The Folgers Coffee, they went simple. And it worked. It's iconic because it's it's Folgers red and you got the, the gold brand, the gold band at the bottom. And the numbers are gold. How, how do you, how, or is that copper? I don't know. Either way, the car stands out because you recognize it. You don't need to be bold and throw whatever, throw something to, throw everything on the onto the car and hope something sticks. Sometimes you just need to step back, think it all, think about it, and make a simple scheme like this one. Like like this scheme right here. Like I said, so it's like I, I said it before and I'll say it again. Sometimes having a simple scheme is the way to go. And this scheme being so simple, I rate it a back. This scheme is back. Absolutely back. Although it does not get throwback of the year nominations. <sighs> Sorry, Levine Family Racing, but you're but this but the Toyota red, orange, and yellow stripes that are synonymous with the American Motorsports brand for for the manufacturer on the sides of an all-white race car isn't cool. In fact, I find it to be a cheap and lazy way to to make a to make a throwback. Is what I would say if it wasn't accurate to the cards drawing back to. In fact, Levine Family Racing is actually throwing it back to the 1989 Toyota Celica that won the IMSA GTO Championship. I'm surprised. Yeah, well, yes, I think this scheme might be forgotten, unless it's, like, on camera a lot. And trust me, with the with the, with the news of De Benedetto, I'm pretty sure it's going to be on, on the cameras all. The cameras are going to be on this car a lot. 
But in a few weeks, everyone's going to probably forget it ever raised. It was ever raised at Darlington until they watch the race on YouTube. And they're like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that scene. It's actually very accurate. Hell, they even went out of their way and slapped a big old 95 on the hood of the race car to, to make it more accurate to the time period. Once again, I will say this before, I'll say it, I'll say it time and time again. This scheme is a, is also a statement that says simple designs work. Just don't be too simplistic about it. You know, that's all I ask. Just don't be too simplistic about it, you know? While this game won't be up for Throwback of the Year nominations, it is back in my books. Congratulations, Level 9 Family Racing. Your scheme is absolutely cool. I hope for the best that it just does not get forgotten. Alright guys, that is going to conclude my 2019 Darlington Paint Scheme review. Thank you all for watching so much. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And if you have not yet, make sure you ring that notification bell icon so that way you're notified of all my uploads, whatever and whenever they may be. Follow me on social media. All my social media handles are in the description down below, but if you don't want to read them there, I got them for you right here. It's Snapchat and Instagram at Alan Mooch. That's A-L-A-N underscore M-0-0-C-H. Twitter and Tumblr at SonicFan1750. Uh, make sure you follow, subscribe to my other YouTube channel, SonicFan1750. Link to my other channel and all my friends who make YouTube videos channels in the description down below as well. Make sure you follow me on Twitch. That's Alan Mitch, A-L-A-N underscore M-0-0-C-H. Spelled the same way as my Instagram and my Snapchat. And if you want to and you have not yet, make sure you join my Discord server. The invite link to my server is in the description down below. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to keep on dancing. Move your feet to the beat. Hey, remember, until we end on the pet line, I'm Alan, and I'm out of here. I'll catch y'all on the flip side. Here comes the outro. I'll break it down now.